Released in early access on Steam by developer Arcadia VR and publisher Sphere Room, September 30th, 2022, Requisition VR is an ambitious new co-op zombie title that's so far doing an admirable job of using a tried and true formula, while still changing things up a bit in a bid to differentiate this one from the sea of other Left 4 Dead-like games out there. This won't be a review so much as it is a preview and breakdown of what to expect as this interesting game comes together over the next year or so. Thanks to Arcadia VR for the early access Steam key. Welcome to Nevermont, the most dangerous and zombie city. The story of Requisition VR goes a little something like this. In the state of Nevermount, a mystical fog appeared that has mutated most of the residents, turned them into zombie-like creatures. You and a few others are doing the whole ragtag band of survivors thing, doing your best to stay alive, helping others when you can, hold up with the hopes that the fog will lift, some kind of cure or miracle may pop up, while doing your best to wait and fight it out. Yeah, we've heard the story in movies and video games countless times, and to be perfectly honest with you, these writers, all of them, from indie movies, Hollywood blockbusters and video games, really need to come up with some new material, and cut out this copy and paste path of least resistance bullshit. I mean, come on, you go over to Prime Movies, Netflix, Hulu, turn on a video game. It's just the same story being told over and over again with minor tweaks so they don't come off as blatant plagiarism. But as usual, I digress. That's the story in a nutshell. I trust you guys over at Arcadia VR will find some way to add some amount of much needed originality to this story as the game gets fleshed out over time. Sometimes I feel like I'm watching and playing sequels of the same movies and games. Games get a bit of a pass due to interactivity and gameplay elements, but still, please, for the love of whatever gods you serve, add something new, unexpected, and captivating to this story. I do like the way the story was told, though. With these comic book styled images on screen, I prefer when VR games give seamless cutscenes, similar to the ones we see in games like Battle Sister, where you're kept in the story, in VR, and not through the use of flat images, but still, it was done better here than some games like, let's say, Blair Witch VR, which I understand was a port, but still. I think you should check the car hoods. There's bound to be a battery under one of them. The visuals in Requisition VR are pretty good. I do suspect, though, since it's still in early access. There are optimization issues at play here, as my experience playing this was all over the place. My PC ain't nothing to write home about. But I do meet more than the minimum requirements. But even with overclocking, this game gave me hell to run. It didn't even seem to make a difference whether I set the video quality to low or ultra. I just couldn't catch a break. I've seen other videos of this game and no one else seems to have this problem. So I guess if you have a really good gaming rig setup, you won't experience what I did. But while my PC isn't a powerhouse, it ain't no hamster on a wheel either. I've played and reviewed many PC VR games without this stress. So I'm not sure what's the issue here. For now, I'll just assume Requisition VR isn't well optimized just yet. The character models and environments do look good though, regardless. <laughs> There's also very little clipping. Neither your hands or objects pass through each other. And when there is clipping, it's more than likely a glitch. But again, this is early access. No judgments there and no love lost. We drove around the burning biomass. Mutants' bodies were crunching under the wheels. In the sound department, All's good here. The voice acting is some good B-movie, from the little I heard, between the lady over the radio and the narrator. The narrator's voice, although sufficient, sounds cliché though. I suspect I must be like one out of millions of people who notice things like these. But seriously guys, and I'm talking to both the video game and movie industry, indie and AAA, change the mold. Is it that I'm just getting too old for this shit? Is it that because I've been around for nearly five decades I've seen it all and these movies, games and their allure are just simply not made for me? They're made to entertain the 18 to 30 demographic? Maybe. Anyway, the voice acting is fine, as much of a cliche as it may be. A few days ago our scouts were able to pinpoint an exact location of a secret military bunker. Over in the gameplay department, before I go into my personal experience with this, let me first talk about Arcadia's roadmap for Requisition VR. It's a pretty ambitious one, like I said earlier, but if they stick to this, which being the indie studio they are, I expect their ambitions and passion alone will allow them to. This could be one really good title by late 2023. These guys are adding a lot throughout the rest of this year and beyond, with new zombie models, maps, story expansions, a sandbox mode, holiday season models and themes, new weapons, improved animations, teleportation, 
localization, a Quest 2 and PSVR release and a bunch more. So, with this roadmap and the current early access state of this game, I trust you'll understand why I'm not so much reviewing this game, and why I'm respectfully giving it many passes for all its current flaws. I've been doing this video game journalism thing since 2003, and paying attention to games for even longer, while being in this indie scene in my own way for quite some time, so I know better than to start taking a shit on people's efforts while they're still in the fetal stages. I have much empathy for indie creators, regardless of what your medium is. On startup, so far we've got an adequate amount of options. You can play standing or seated, with calibration for both. You have video, audio, and comfort options to help customize your experience as well. There is multiplayer, where you can play with three others, much like other games along this line. There is PvP and a story mode, with apparently four maps to choose from so far. I say apparently because I was only able to access two of these story mode maps. Steam VR crashed over and over each time I tried to play the farm or bunker maps. These were not even available for selection when I first got the game, so either they're still under construction or again it's just my shitty rig. Time will tell I suppose. There's also a horde mode, but so far what I've learned is this game is really meant to be played in co-op, because things get really hectic on your own. In story mode, you're required to complete a certain amount of objectives to move on, but I couldn't shake the feeling that if I had at least one more person helping me out, maybe giving me cover, taking out the strays and horde, while I gather the items, craft and set traps, things would have been much easier. I never got a co-op match going, but I'm left to wonder if the difficulty changes when you're playing with others. Again, time may tell. So far, there's a pretty decent character customization feature. The models look great and there's much you can do to set your characters apart from others. I also love the fact that the first hands I saw in this game were those of African descent. Insignificant to some, but I'll always appreciate little details like this. In requisition VR, you can craft improvised weapons as you have endless crafting possibilities. Requisition VR goes heavy on crafting. This seems to be the game's main draw. Everything is a weapon, and just about everything can be crafted into something more useful. You can combine weapons, regular household items, just about everything can be repurposed. You're able to craft traps, bombs, among other things. You can pick up any object in the game, even a frying pan and go to town on these mutants. Kinda like Dead Rising on steroids. You've also got the now popular backpack inventory system seen in games like Saints and Sinners which served its purpose well here. So with a pretty rough start, playing requisition VR may be a rocky experience, with long load times, some crashes and some other janky and buggy moments, but like the devs made clear with their disclaimer at the beginning, this is work in progress. So you may want to do as I plan to, bear with these guys as they realize their ambitious dream. As it stands. This early access version is available on Steam for $19.99, and if you think your PC can handle it, I'd recommend you check it out. There's a strong chance you may even have a better time than I did. If you like first person VR zombie games, then why not join the Arcade of VR team for this ride? Thank you for watching. If you like my content, feel free to like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Let's say this video didn't meet your expectations or was simply below your standards, though. Then hey, dislike, unsub, and whatever else it takes to make you feel better. Either way, I won't hold it against you. Our game is never over.